Hi, I am Adolf Navarro and welcome back to my little studio. Are you a fan of Jurassic Park films like me? Would you like to make your own dinosaur animations? Well, I want to show you how it is possible to make cool jungle adventure sequences using icon and the characters and models of Revolution's content store. But first, let's take a look to the sequences. Pretty cool, isn't it? Well, I think it gets more interesting if I tell you I did it in just one day. Yes, just me and just one day. Let's see how it is possible. Okay, as usual, the first thing we have to do is to build the scene. I use the hill standard height large map terrain, including with icon, reducing the height scale and smoothing the terrain a little, keeping the texture maps provided by default. Then, I use Revolution's botanic pack to populate the scene with a variety of tropical plants and trees. This pack, available in Revolution's content store, provides a huge amount of trees, bushes and grass in a speed tree format. These models can be animated by the wind defined in the scene and can be easily placed over the terrain using Icon's gardening tools. The scene can be completed using the standard grass items provided by Icon. We can configure the random appearance of the grass very easily and then start gardening as well. The grass billboards will be automatically placed following the unevenness of the terrain so we can feel it very quickly. I also use the 3D space tower provided by Icon. Applying on it a seamless texture of a jungle landscape. Using Photoshop elements, I mirrored the original picture and joined both parts. In this way, I can tile the texture horizontally in the tower prop. This prop has the two side texture feature disabled, so it is only visible when facing its normals. It allows me to put the camera outside the tower and not get blocked by the rear part of the prop. I place some of the trees flying over the scene. It could look weird in the preview window, but their only purpose was to create the semi-shadowed ambient in the path. I completed the visual aspect of the set using a forest HDR image in Icon's IBL settings. IBL or image-based lighting uses an image to create the ambient light of the scene and to generate the reflection maps in the PBR materials. In this case, it provided a greenish tone to the light that looked much more natural. Just a tip, when I started making animations, I made the mistake of building the scenes before defining the camera views. So, I was putting a lot of items on the scene that ended up not being visible in the renders. However, they were taking resources of the system and making the project unnecessary bigger. So, I recommend planning the shots in advance, adding the plants and trees in the camera view while it is moving in the timeline. In this way, you'll put just the necessary items in the scene, making the project lighter and therefore easier to manage. For the explorers, I use Sane and Jane, standard characters provided by Icon. I didn't even change the clothes, just replacing Jade's original pan crest for a more traditional haircut. I used the T-Rex and the pterosaurs of the dinosaur bundle from Revolution's content store. I tweaked the texture maps a little, converting them in PBR, and adjusting the rawness map to get the shiny aspect in the skin caused by the jungle humidity. All these dinosaur models have embedded performs that can be activated and concatenated in the timeline. So, 
To animate them is very easy and fast. In any case, we can always edit the motion clips created by the performance using iClone's Edit Motion layer. Any manipulation in the model bones is recorded as a key in the timeline and added to the motion. We can even save all or part of the motion clip with the modifications in order to use them again in other sequences. I also use the Adventure 4 wheel drive car from the interactive modern vehicles pack, choosing the green version with the open doors. These vehicles have a great advantage as they can be actually driven over icon terrains using their embedded lower screen controllers, automatically recording the resultant motions. But I will explain it in detail later. I also add several particle effects. The jungle fog and the debris expelled by the car when running are standard icon particle effects. But I also modify the original speed ejection effect from the Popcorn FX Library 40 pack. This effect can be linked to any mesh that, when moved, projects the particles with inertia, and I use it to simulate water splashes ejected from the T-Rex and the car wheels. And finally, I use an old but still very effective effect from the Natural Phenomenon Effects pack number 2 to simulate the leaves falling from the trees. The first scene is very simple. I just placed the camera in the set and animated the dinosaurs using their performance. I applied several performs one after the other. Then I selected all the clips in the timeline and merged them in a single one, expanding its duration, getting a slower motion. It seemed to me that the animation looked a little robotic in the areas where the motion clips were merged. So, I used the sample animation clip tool to get all the motion clip keys. After doing this, I could use the Curve Editor plugin to optimize the number of keys, getting a smoother and more natural motion. If necessary, we can select keys in the curve editor and change the tangent values in order to get even smoother motions. I created two transform keys for the pterosaurs, setting their position at the beginning and the end of the clip, and taking care that the animals were visible in the shot. Both of them use the same perform but I displaced one of the motion clips in the timeline, so they seem to have different movements. In the second sequence, I also had to animate Jade entering inside the car while closing the door. To do that, I used the Edit Reach Target tool of Icon. I activated the Reach Effector of the right hand. Then, I detached the dummy right hand effector from Jade's body and I linked it to the door. So, when rotating the door, the linked effector was following the door, while Jade's right hand followed the effector, seeming that Jade was actually closing the door. I completed the motion, adding keys in the body using the Add Motion layer. Icon's inverse kinematics did the rest, obtaining a quite natural movement. I used Icon's face key tool to put a scared face in Jane. I just had to choose a fear expression, adjust its intensity and tweak it using the modify and muscle editors. I activated the soft cloth physics in Jade's hair and played the sequence with the soft cloth physics engine activated, getting a very natural reaction. Once I got the decided effect in Jade's hair, I deactivated the soft cloud physics engine to avoid overwriting the recorded motion when playing the sequence again. Finally, I used the camera DOF or Deep of Field, changing the focus distance in the timeline to pass from a close up sharp image and a blurry background to the reverse situation. In the third scene, 
I used the reach effectus trick again. After posing and linking both characters to the car, I activated the reach effectors in Sane hands and in his right foot. Then I detached Sane's dummy right hand effector, linking it to the gear selector. I detached as well the dummy left hand effector, linking it to the steering wheel. And finally, I did the same with Sane's dummy right foot effector, linking it to the throttle pedal. So moving the steering wheel, I moved Sane's left hand. Moving the gear selector, I moved Sane's right hand. And moving the pedal, I moved Sane's right foot as well. Also, when I sent backwards the character torso, when the car started moving forward, both hands remained firmly grabbing the steering wheel and the gear selector, as well as the right foot remained pressing the throttle. The final scene with the T-Rex chasing the car was the more complex. And here is where the lure controller of the car result most helpful. I placed the car a little far away from the starting point of the sequence. I switched to the Icon's bullet physics engine and I set the playing mode to by frame. I used the physics toolbox controller to start the car motion. In this case, just driving straight at full speed. Switching again to the physics engine, we can play the recorded animation. If we are not satisfied, we can switch again to the bullet engine, modify the car's direction and start a new recording that will override the previous one. I did that until I got the decided motion. The car followed the terrain but the animation looked stiff and wooden because the car was running fast over a bumpy terrain. To solve this problem, I sampled the animation clip and then I could use the Curve Editor plugin of Icon in the recorded animation. I selected the rotation keys and I optimized their number, reducing them dramatically and obtaining a smooth motion of the car over the terrain. But the wheels still look too attached to the vehicle's body. So, in order to simulate the action of the shock absorbers, first I created a dummy cube aligned to the chassis. Next, I created four more dummy objects, each one aligned to one of the wheels. I set physics properties to the body-based dummy, defining it as kinematic while I set the physics of the wheel dummy objects as dynamic. Then, I created a spring constraint for each one of the wheel dummies, taking care that their target was set to the base dummy instead of the world. I set the limits of the spring effect to 200, with a damping value of 10, affecting just to the motion in a range of 20 leaving the rotation unaffected. I attach the base dummy object to the chassis. And then I detach the physics toolbox elements of the wheels, linking them to the wheel dummy objects. Then I play the sequence again with the physics engine activated. And there we go, Icon created a new motion clip for each of the wheel dummies, reacting to the springs, but keeping the rotation of the wheels attached to the dummies. If we don't like the result, we can't repeat the play, having previously changed the spring parameters, for example setting the damping to 5. Every time we play, if we have Icon's rigid physics activated, a new clip overbrights the previous one. So. It's important that when we get the desired effect, we must deactivate the rigid physics in Icon, or deactivate the physics properties of each one of the related items in order to keep the motion clip generated by the physics engine. In this way, when we play the sequence again, Icon will not redo the calculations, just using the motion clip previously recorded. I place the T-Rex and apply the running motion clip I previously have made and saved using the performs and the edit motion layer. 
I set the position of the dinosaur in the first and the last frame of the animation, automatically creating two transform keys. Icon usually sets by default a progressive motion between transform keys. It causes the T-Rex starting running slow, gaining speed to end up also slowing down. So he was reaching the car in the middle of the sequence. I needed a constant motion, so I selected the two transform keys of the T-Rex and opened the transition curve presets, selecting the linear option. Now the dyno speed was constant while chasing the car. Then I adjusted the T-Rex position every time he was putting a foot in the ground. It created new transfer keys that also had to be set as linear. I placed Zane and Jane inside the car, linking them to the chassis. Then I applied the particle effects, the fog icon effect to add mystery to the jungle, two icon grainy dust effects linked to the car to simulate the grass ejected by the car wheels, the falling leaves, and the modified effects popcorn ejection effect assigned to the T-Rex and to each one of the wheels. Finally, I adjust a little the camera transform keys in the first and the last frame to get the best camera view during all the sequence. The advantage using Icon is that we can work controlling the illumination, the effects of the final textures in real time. Final renders took less than one second per frame, even working at full HD and having the global illumination activated. All this without needing expensive render farms and just using a single workstation. These working conditions not only provide us an enormous flexibility to make changes on the fly, but are the key for dramatic reductions in the production time. In order to get a more cinematic effect in the icon renders, I just added cinematic filters using the Ignite pack from HitFilm when editing the videos in Becca's Pro. It allowed me to pass from this aspect to this another one just in a matter of minutes. So here we are. As you have seen, I used a lot of tools included in Icon, but the fact is that none of them are especially complicated. And I believe this is the best virtue of Icon, that all its tools are very intuitive and easy to learn and use, allowing us to achieve results in a very short period of time. I hope you have found this video interesting. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video.